Hello, everybody. I'm not sure if I'm connected or not. We're soon going to find out. Hello, everyone. Just want to find your comments. Okay. We're here. We're here tonight. We're here. How is everybody? I'm waiting for everyone to log in. You can see a, a picture of the, the album that we are going to be working on. Hi, Anne, Sarah. Megan. And for some reason, my video is going in and out. Can everybody see that okay? I'm not able to see the whole album. I may have to get Ricky here to help me. And I think I'm still live. Okay, girls. Suzanne. Hi, Lori. That's okay if you're just here to watch because this does get recorded. And um, you can play it back later. Sorry, ladies, I have a little bit of a migraine going on. So if my, when I get migraines, my uh, words start to slur. So don't be thinking I'm nipping in and having a little drink here and there. It's just... Uh, just the headache for some reason affects my tongue and it has gives me a hard time talking. So we did have some difficulty, uh, technical difficulties last night. And I will tell you the technical difficulty was Ricky. He forgot to bring this album home last night. And so I didn't want to do the video without having the album. I did remind him about 20 times to bring it home, but he kept forgetting. I'm right here. And he is right here. But, you know, I called him, I sent him a text, I emailed him, and on his way home, he calls me and says, I don't have the binder. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, how are we going to do the video without people being able to see the binder? Especially when I am doing something different. I am not going to do another recipe one, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, I'm actually going to do like a Christmas type album that I may use for just strictly holiday Christmassy type of um, recipes in there. So I haven't decided yet. Can you all see okay if someone could just give me a thumbs up and let me know that everything you're you're all able to view okay? Whoops, I'm also trying to watch it on my iPad at the same time. So Susan, I'm also going to put some volume. Whoops, I'm also trying to watch it on my There we go. Okay. So it seems to be a little dark. I don't know if I can lighten that up a bit. Hmm, okay. Anyway, so this is what we're going to be working on. And Megan, you like what idea? The idea of doing like a separate Christmas one just for Christmas recipes, shortbreads and all those special things that we make at Christmas. I'm really liking that idea. But anyway, this one that we're going to be working on, this is quite an easy album, actually, compared to some of the others that we have done. So I'm opening it up here so that you can see. It does have a hinge um, through the middle section, but both of these here are, are basically the same. They're, they are like a waterfall um, through here. And we can just flip through those. So there's two sections with, with that in there. And then on this side, I'm going to try to bring this over. On this side here, this flips open. And then we have another waterfall here. Now, I uh, messed up and didn't put my magnet underneath, so I had to put a sticker there. But you can hear the, the little um, clicking of the magnet. I love that sound. And then this section here has, um, what I've done is I've cut the paper 
before putting it down so that it can give me a little edge to hold my recipe cards in like that. Because I really like the paper, I didn't want to just attach a recipe on there. I want to be able to, to pull it out um, or switch up recipes or put recipes on both sides of a card and then just slide them in. So I kind of like this doing this idea instead of just cutting it like the four by six and, and putting it down there. I um, hope you guys like that idea as well. So every page I've done that so that we can we can tuck the tuck the pages in. Snap the magnet and then on the other side, on this side here, I've done the same thing. And again, you can see that I did forget to put my magnets in there. Um, and again, the little cards can slide in so that you can see I slid in one of these cards here. Um, oops, my, my glue isn't holding. I'm gonna have to re-glue that in there. Don't want that happening. And again, all the little cards are sliding in there. We did use two collection kits on this. Um, also, there's a couple of big pockets here to hold things in. And these are all of the stickers. And what I have done, and what you can do for homework for next week, is that you can put your stickers onto black cardstock and fussy cut around them. And what that does is it allows us to um, secure them. Oops. It allows us to secure them down and it also makes them a little sturdier and then in some cases I've popped them up and then on the cover I have the lady popped up and you can see how she really stands out by um, you know outlining it with the black so those of you that have the country kitchen paper you're going to be able to just follow this along um, Dan are you looking on your computer does it look okay yeah, I'm just, um, it's also a little, when I move too fast, so I will try to move a little slower. And you're, someone's getting some feedback from my phone or my laptop. Hmm. Okay, let's leave it like that. Okay, on this side here i'm going to be a little close to the camera but i wanted to show you um dan i i don't like the fact that i can't see what i'm looking at when i'm showing this to people why can't you oh there we go okay it's on your computer. no it's not it's not going on my computer sorry it's not you're telling me it's going i'm looking at a oh my god ladies, ricky do you miss me ladies oh it's not doing anything on there. Well, that's because you haven't pushed the button. I pushed the button. Oh my goodness. Look, it's still not where I am. Anybody want a husband? Okay. See, it keeps doing that. It's just stopping. Hi, Melissa. Yeah, I'm having trouble uh, viewing what I'm looking at. It, it's just not coming up. It keeps, okay, well, carry on. it keeps stopping. Dan's going to try to figure it out. On the back of this, this is what I like about the Cartabella paper is that you always have something that's a big uh, piece of scenery, uh, whether it's the boys' toy box one that shows the big room, the summer camp shows the inside of the, the uh, camp um, cabin. Um, but this one's got this beautiful scenery on the back here. So that is pretty cool. So that is what we're going to be working on. Now, before I get any further, and the reason I'm not doing um, another one as far as a recipe book is concerned, well, a typical recipe book, I'll do a Christmas one, is because there's going to be another video, and I'm going to briefly show you this one because it's not finished. And again, this is not for me. I've pulled these things off of YouTube, and I've, um, you know, um, oh my gosh, my words aren't coming tonight. I, I kind of tweak them the way that I want to tweak them. So this one here is with the Graphic 45 um, Farmhouse Paper Line. And what I'm going to be doing with this kit is to make it a little bit more feasible for you guys is that 
I'm going to split up because it uses a full paper pack and some some uh, solid papers and then your cardstock. I'm going to kit it with half of the pack of the cards and a half a pack of the ephemera. So it's not going to be exactly like this. It might be a different um, card that you get to put on the front, but it's going to be a little bit cheaper for you. So what's cool with this one, it doesn't have magnets. What I've done is I've used this big clip and then I'm going to have, I have these buttons that are really cool. They're like a rolling pin and some cookies and so forth. And I'm going to hang them off with string off of uh, this clip. What do you think about this one so far, ladies? I'm going to show you the inside. Now, it isn't finished, so I'm just going to show you a little bit inside here. Um, on this one side, it's got pockets, and so there's going to be like these cards here whoops, that slide into each of the pockets. Oops, except I'm going to make it a little bit stronger because my back pocket just want to tuck it in there and then in the middle section we've got these pieces here that open up but what I've also done is I have these little aprons um, that I've put inside that you can write recipes on these as well and then there will be little strings hanging off of the um, off of the little holes on the aprons. So it's quite a cute little book. Every one of them has a little belly band and then inside I've tucked the little um, the little aprons for each of those sections. And then this section here is just got like an accordion style pocket that you can fill up with a lot of recipes. What's confusing, Debbie? Am I confusing people or? I'm just showing this other this other album. This isn't the one that we're working on tonight. I'm just showing the reason why I'm not doing a recipe album tonight or a, a typical recipe album. Now, this one here, as I said, it hooks up with this clip. Oh, and I should say that on the inside, there will also be another section like this one over on this side, um, but it'll just be a two-piece one, not a, not a three-piece. And then, when this folds up, I just want to show you the detail on the side of the album. It's really kind of like a patchwork. Um, and then this actual binding of this one is a little different as well, so that the album lays completely flat. And then on the back, the papers are all layered. And I'm hoping you're all seeing that. I'm looking at the Facebook, and it's... Looks like it's a little slower than what it should be. And um, Sheila, I will be actually cutting the aprons out and putting them in the kit. I can include the PDF file. I could send it individually, um, but I thought I would cut them out. It's called, I think, Annie's Apron on Cricut, and there's also one on Silhouette. Um, and then I just... Um, uh, cut down the measurement so that it would fit in those belly bands. So this is why I'm not doing that album tonight. So we also have, oh, I've got Gans throwing cords at me here. We also have another recipe kit that's available in the store with full uh, instructions with it. He's trying to fix me here. So Yeah, I'm trying to fix you here. He's plugging me in directly to the internet because it is, let's try that. Sorry, it's really lagging and it, it's, um, I want to be sure that you're seeing everything. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it going live and it's for some reason it, oh, am I there now? Are we there now? Can you hear me now? No, uh, something's going on. It just keeps connecting and disconnecting. But so, you're, But you're live there. I'm live here. It's just a little slower. Okay. So anyway, this kit here is the Apron Strings by Simple Stories. And this kit, you get um, full instructions with this one. This one I'm working on tomorrow. So I can't show you what it looks like completed. But you do get the chipboard stickers with it. 
you get the apron strings um, sticker book you get all of the a bunch of the different 12 by 12 papers and they are really nice and then the other thing we have I'm just gonna flip this out of the way is you also get the six by eight book uh, with this the six by eight paper pad and there is just some really cute things in here there's a kitchen conversion chart there is you know life is sh life is short lick the, lick the bowl let's eat um, make the world a better place I just really really like these ones they are I'm gonna say it they're super cute and there's recipe cards in here so this is quite a nice little album I'm hoping not, not too fast I'm hoping that I will have this completed and in the Guelph store for you all to look at the kits are there already you can order online or pick up a kit anytime you want it also includes the yellow snap uh, binder with this one as well so that's what that one is watch your toes I'm backing up, back up. watch your toes out of the way. If I run over your toes, I don't want to hear you screaming. Okay, so that's what that one is. Alrighty. So, as I said, I am not going to be doing this particular album. I am going to be working on a Christmas one. And it is also a Cartabella kit. Um, and I took it out of our... Uh, packages of our clearance kits because again I have to use two of them so I um, we're still trying to get this thing going properly and it's just lagging it's very frustrating for me so this is the one I'm working with it's Santa's workshop and I've started to take these stickers off because I started to do my homework and what I've been doing is I'm taking the stickers off and I'm backing them onto the black heavyweight, that licorice twist um, cardstock that we sell, that card shop cardstock. We have that in the online store as well. And I'm backing them and I'm just fussy cutting. So it's making them really nice and strong for me. So if I want to pop one up and use it to hold, you know, um, a recipe behind it, I can. Or just even putting them flat, it just really does make them pop. So that's the sticker sheet that goes with this particular one, and I'm using the, the black. My album, I'm using a combination of black and red paper. I want the red paper to use on the outside for my cover and the inside of my cover. So I'm going to be using red and I'm going to be using black. But this is some of the other paper that's in. Whoops, sorry, I already have one open. I can start with the one. And so, again, this is what I was saying about Cartabella paper, is that they always have a paper that is a full scenery of something. And so this will be kind of cool on the back of my album, um, or I may be using this one on the front of the album. So here, what I would do is I would have one part of it on here and the other part of it on here so I'm actually going to use up uh, more of the scenery than if I just used it on the back um, now you can do the same thing you can take this and put it on your front cover so that you're also using part of this scenery on your front cover for the flap totally up to you as I said before the nice thing with using a collection kit is that everything matches so it doesn't really matter where it goes in the album it's all going to work out it's all going to just all come together so nicely but this particular paper i really like it to use on the on the outside um the the large scenery one okay so we also included some cutting instructions um for you and the first thing that you want to do is we want to have our chipboard pieces cut so from the original video I extended out this spine and the reason I did that is because once you have the recipes in there it's going to be so thick it's not going to close nicely so I made this a little wider 
and I made the hinge for it a little wider as well so that um, you know it will hold a lot more recipes for you I think they're like you can put almost a hundred recipes in this thing by the time you're done so it's gonna be a lovely gift for somebody um, to pass down or for yourself um, just to hold some of your recipes so our pieces for our and I'm not going to be able to get this all in so I'm going to just show you a little bit at a time here so our chipboard we have two pieces that are cut eight and a half by eight and a half is it going no just keep doing what you're doing keep and going. then we have the spine which is two and a quarter by eight and a half and then we have the piece that's the flap and this flap over piece is three by eight and a half so eight and a half by eight and a half, two pieces of cards of uh, chipboard, one piece for the spine, two and a quarter by eight and a half, and then one piece for the flap that goes over, and that's three by eight and a half. Okay. All right. Are we all following along? Yeah, uh, adding some Nouveau Drops or glitter on any of this would be really nice, uh, Sheila. I, you know, there's so much more decorating that you can do to this beyond what I've done. Now, those of you that were lucky enough to get the Country Kitchen um, kits, and those of you that did order online or came in and picked up two kits, we also gave you some magnets. We gave you some ribbon and some little tags to also add to this, um, just to make it a little bit more appealing to you. So... Tonight what we're going to do is we are going to uh, do our chipboard piece pieces. We're going to cover this with our cardstock and we're going to start cutting our cardstock for the inside of the album. As far as the printed paper, that we're going to finish up next week. I may even get you to do some homework in between the two videos for you to cut all your pieces and then we'll just glue them all together, uh, put everything together in the hinge and then we're going to go, go from there. All right, so away we go. So hopefully you've got your chipboard uh, cut and ready. And then what we need now is we need three sheets of cardstock cut to 10 and a half by 12. So what's going to happen is, because it's not going to be quite wide enough to do... And we don't want it, we don't want it, uh, the crease or the, the um, two pieces joining in a crease. So we're going to cut them 10 and a half by 12, but we're not going to use the full last sheet. Okay, so let's get those cut to 10 and a half by 12. 10 and a half. I'm using my big fancy schnancy cutter tonight. So that's 10 and a half by 12. 10 and a half by 12. And 10 and a half by 12. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to join the three pieces together. And you all know I like to use both the score tape. Oh, and by the way, we did get, if you hadn't already seen, we have the um, Couture Creations score tape, the three quarter inch score tape back in stock. So if um, you want to order that that is available I know we haven't had it for a while I don't know how long they're going to be offering this to us so um, I would suggest getting some sooner than later if you want I think this is $4.59 a roll whereas regular score tape is a little bit more pricey um, but some people do prefer the name brand and that's okay whatever works for you I just find because of the albums um, and using also the art glitter glue that 
I just, I, I use this tape here. I, I know it's going to hold. Now you don't want to do your album just with tape because the tape over time loses its stickiness and shrinks and then your album will come apart. So you want to be able to use uh, both. And the reason for using both is because it does give you a little bit of wiggle room or play time so that if you don't match things up properly or something is, is off, you can lift it up. You have time to lift it up and re-glue it or move it. Okay, so line of score tape. There we go. Are we all okay? Line of score tape. And I have no nails. Now, next week's video I had scheduled for Tuesday night. I apologize. It's going to be Wednesday night. I'm actually in Guelph doing a class on Tuesday night. I'm doing the little Halloween boxes that we showed you. We do still have room in the class if you'd like to join us. And we also have them available as kits. Okay, so I've got my paper glued down. So I'm going to lift up my score piece, my um, chipboard pieces so that I can lay them on this paper. And so we're going to have a one inch border at the top and the bottom, which is going to allow us to lift and fold over our um, our cardstock and I also want to leave enough on the ends right here so that we can also fold that over okay so as you can see I want to be sure that I'm not in between a joint when I'm adding my paper so if you look you look at this album you're not going to see where the joints are because it's going to be covered with with paper anyway so I'm going to make it work so that that is in between and then again with that one and with the last one all right so the first thing I want to do is I want to get some tape on here and secure that down so I'm going to run some score tape along my first piece. Um, your score tape is on the going down the 10 and a half. 12 is your is your going vertically. So it's your length is 10 and a half. That's where your score tape is going to go down. Does that help Irene? So we're keeping the long pieces going horizontally. If you put your chipboard on top of it, you'll be able to see that um, it's the ten and a half because your chipboard's eight and a half. Actually, your chipboard's eight and a half by eight and a half, but it's eight and a half so that when it's down, we've got an inch at the top and an inch at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just putting a couple of lines of score tape on there. I'm going to lift it and then I'm going to add my art glitter glue onto that piece. Okay, we need to find something to lift. Did you see the question from Irene? Yes, I saw the question from Irene. I did. You're, you're a star. I'm a star? I am a star. You're up in the sky somewhere. Oh, I'm up in the sky, he says. I'm not the one that forgot to bring the album home, though. You know when you tell them 20 million times... And they still don't remember? I'm sure everyone out there can relate to that. Okay, so we're using the art glitter glue. I have my tip on here. We have got a load of art glitter glue in. Before it gets cold, if we need to ship this to you, you're going to want to get it shipped out soon. Otherwise, you can pick up in the store. And I don't know if you noticed when we did the post that, that I brought in two gallon containers of this 
So if you really go through a lot like I do, and you want to buy a gallon to get you through the cold months because, you know, it's going to be cold for a long time, um, then order that now. Get that shipped out. Okay, so I've put my ruler there just as a guide. It helps me to know that I'm about an inch an inch in. And then I'm going to use my trusty little scraper. So just to remind everybody, when you're using your art glitter glue, you don't need a ton. So it's nice to have that metal tip on there because it does allow you to do a thin line of the glue, but you do need to spread that glue on, onto the, uh, the back. All right, the next piece I'm putting in is the spine piece. So I'm going to put some tape on there. Um, now, I don't know how many of you saw the post. Hopefully you all did. We have a very special guest on this Saturday for a live presentation from Elizabeth Craft Designs. The owner, Els, is going to be doing a um, about an hour video with us showing us how to use the Elizabeth Craft dies, the planners. Um, and there may be an announcement as well. We're not sure yet. We're waiting to hear. Uh, they've got a, a new line launching and we're hoping that we will be able to do pre-orders online with you guys on Saturday. And that's only if it arrives in their warehouse in time. So that's going to be pretty special because you guys will see it first and be able to order before anybody else. Um, I haven't even got a clue how much stuff. I just know that there's a nice launch coming. And um, so what will happen is you can watch on the Facebook. You can comment, yes, I want this or I want this. And we'll keep a tally of it. And then at the end, um, you know, when, when the order comes in, then we go from there. Dan will have all the details as to how that part's going to work because he's the master of that. So I try to leave about a quarter inch in between. And if you want, you can run a piece of score tape. I'll do it on this section. Just so that you know how much space you need in between. Doesn't hurt to, to do that. Whoops, it's stuck to my tape. But I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna seal that piece down. Are we still good? What didn't you get, Lena? I never got it, she says, but I don't know what, what you're referring to. Okay, the next piece I'm adding, ladies, is the next the back cover all right so again I'm using half inch score tape on here if you have wider go ahead and use wider um, doesn't hurt to have you know lots of tape on there the last thing you want is this thing to fall apart on you and we all still good oh about Saturday oh you didn't get the um, the message, well, it is this Saturday coming up, so don't be sad. You'll be able to watch it, and it will be recorded, so you can play it back. Um, it's just if you play it back, if you're ordering stuff, we um, you can't order on the playback. You can only order on the live, if the stuff is available. Now, after Els does this video, that's the launch of our Perky Planner group. And our Perky Planner group is going to meet at the end of each month in the Guelph store. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to have, I'll have my dies and everything there for you to play with, to try them out. Um, Sheila, I used three sheets of red cardstock on here. There's going to be quite a bit left over. So I cut three pieces, 10 and a half by 12, just because I want to be sure that I'm not, I, you know, I've got my spacing, um, enough room with my spacing and I didn't want to be short at the very end. You won't waste that paper. You can use it, cut it down later to be used on the inside. 
Um, so yeah, so the Perky Planner group is going to meet monthly and it's going to be a Saturday that you come and you just play, bring your planner stuff, pick up ideas from others that are going to be there. Is there uh, going to be cookies? Is there going to be cookies? Well, if Dan bakes the cookies, there'll be cookies there for you ladies. And maybe we'll even include a recipe for you to put in your recipe book. You know, and you can use your planner for recipes as well. If you were giving this one away and then say, oh, I wish I had somewhere to put my recipes. Well, then you can do one of the travel planners and use it for recipes. There are some really nice recipe dies. Uh, one is like a whisk. So it does a whisk on the side of your page. And one is, um, um, they also... Oh dear, I got a lump inside there from something. I don't know what. So it's going to stay there. Because I'm not taking it apart. And that's only going to be between, be between me and you guys. The video is going to be at 5 o'clock on Saturday, Dan? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock Eastern Time. It's a little weird time, but we're dealing with being yeah, it's, uh, as Dan just said, it's a little weird time, but Els is, um, I believe, in Germany, and so we're trying to work around her schedule and work around the fact that I have people here for her retreat, and I can't make it later, because, um, you know, they're going to want to eat, the nerve of them. They're going to want to eat while they're here, and I'm going to be tied up with that as well. So here we go with the multitasking again, you know. Just the usual stuff in our life here. Okay. So I'm just going to put some tape on there. There we go. And no problem, Lena. I hope we get to see you there. And I hope you ladies um, participate in the... Uh, in the video and also in the perky planner group we have a lot of people that have been buying these planner dies and and the reason i like them is because they are multi-purpose you don't need to use them just in your travel planner there are so many components to these dies and they are a great price that you can use them for your cards you can use them on your layouts i mean they can just be used you know it's not like some things and and you know some people like the me and my big idea planners and they are nice um however you know you're limited um as far as your creativity is concerned i i feel anyway personally that you're limited uh with those ones so okay so i'm putting my last piece in here and i'm going to stick that one down okay There we go. I, you know what? I say that lump's not going to bother me, and that lump is bothering me. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, you can see that I have, I only really used a couple of inches on that last piece. So I'm going to cut it out about three inches uh, off the end here. And I'm not going to be able to do it that way, so I'm just going to use my scissors. My trusty scissors. Hi, Lori. Yes, um, this Saturday coming up, Els is doing a live Facebook for us. We're hoping that they will have the new product uh, in-house so that you guys can order, do a pre-order at the same time. You would have first access to the product because of it being a live video with her. And that is pretty exciting news for us. So it is at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. If you miss it, you can watch the playback. But hopefully you can make it. It's more exciting when you guys are actually doing it, watching it live. Okay, so that is my my outside of my album. All of my pieces are, are down, including my lum. Okay, so now we need to cut our cardstock for the inside. So what you want to do is we want two sheets of cardstock and this is going to be eight and three eighths by 12 and one piece eight and three eighths by four. Um, actually, you know what? Let's finish this up before we cut those pieces. So what I want to do is I want to angle off 
on the corners of this. I'm just going to leave a little snippet of paper in there and round it. I'm going to do it to all of the edges like that. It doesn't have to be an exact science here. Oops, sorry. When you work on these albums like this, it's difficult to get everything into the screen. Okay. So once those are cut off, we want to fold over. Where is my... You know, I put everything out. Here we go. I have my Teflon bone folder. Teflon, I like the Teflon because it doesn't... Um, Put marks on your paper. So what you want to do is gently go around and fold your paper up, take a bone folder and go along the edge so that you get a really nice good crease there. Sandy, I know you're trying to read, Sandy says she's trying to resist the dyes. Oh my gosh, it's it's the dark side, but it's such a nice dark side. You have to. You have to. They are just so nice. I know some of the ladies that are on here tonight own them and love them. Okay, so I'm just gently getting my a really nice good crease in there. Lori, I know you are in love with them. We all are in love with them. So the minute Els announces that there's something new, we all go crazy. And I have a feeling that she's in Germany in order to do Hoshanda, which is um, it's like the kind of a shopping channel uh, in Europe. Some of you may may know it. I know some of you get onto those and then email me saying, "Where's the product? Why can't I get it?" And sometimes I don't even know about it yet. So a lot of well, a lot of times the stuff launches in Europe before we get to launch it. We, uh, Lena, we can send you the measurements for the album. I think they are on the Facebook um, page as well. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put some tape across here. Put a line of tape. I'm going to start to fold these edges over. Tape. And I, I apologize if I look like I'm very clumsy tonight. But again, it's the migraine. It doesn't allow my motor skills to function as well as they they should. And somebody told me I was very grumpy when he came in, so he's not listening to me right now. Working. He's working, he says. He's working. Okay. Yes, Lori, she is in Europe. Els is in Europe. That's why we're doing it at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. we got to work around her schedule. Okay, so for this top section, when I take this piece off, whoops, my big long strip of tape, I also do a bead of glue right on that seam of the chipboard. And what that, oh, you could see that piece is off a little bit, but you know what, once it's together, no one's going to say, Heather, you're off an, an eighth of an inch right there. In fact, you're not even going to notice it. So I like to try to run a little bit of glue all along the chipboard because it just, what it does is it wets it and allows you to shape it. And then a, a stream of glue. Lori, she hasn't changed her mind. She is still traveling to Europe. She is in Europe, 
but doing the Facebook Live on our site with us from Europe. Oops, and I didn't take, if you put that score tape down in between, you wanna make sure to lift up the tape so it gets out of your way. Seal everything down well. And I like to get it sealed in between those creases. And I don't know what's happened on my paper there. But we're going to get a little dab of glue. Stick that down. And then run along the edges again. There we go. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Oh, on Monday she said she wasn't going. Oh, I'm not sure what's going on then if if she's around or she isn't around but everything is already in the works for five o'clock so um that's not going to change we're going to leave it at that okay and folding over whoops 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 do you see what i did or didn't do i didn't put my bead of glue across my score tape And you know, all the gluing that I'm doing, some of you may say, wow, that's a little bit of overkill. But honestly, when I put this much time into an album, I don't want it in a year from now coming apart. So if it means putting a little bit more glue, then I'm gonna put a little bit more glue. There we go. Spread that glue down, just like that. And now, going to work on the ends and so tuck that little corner in put a bead of glue come along Here's my blade again. There it is. And put that in. Yeah, we're we're very excited about having Els doing this uh, live video with us. I know that we've been um, one of their bigger stores for carrying the product, and so you know it's always an honor to have one of the owners of a company want to work with us and do something like this. So. All right, here's my one edge is done. That ends up got a nice crease all the way around. Okay, and then the last side where the flap goes over, take that tape off. bead of glue in there and across here now for your cardstock um, you know if you want to use two colors of cardstock on this album like do your your cover and your inside in one color of cardstock and then, you know, do the actual uh, album pages in another color of cardstock. You know what? It's, it's nice to change things up. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. So that is my outside done. And that is my, whoops. What have I done? So there we go. No. What have I done? I 
I'm missing a piece. Oh, ladies, how did I manage to miss a spine? It's like, okay, this isn't going, you know what? There are times when there are things that you shouldn't do. So I got the two spines because we do need two spines and I don't have my, my flap. So I'm gonna have to fix that. So these two pieces. Yeah, see I did, that's the two and a half, that's the spine. Then I needed another spine here. That's why we needed the paper so long. Oh, Lucy. Oh, don't be Lucy me. So I'm going to undo this. I will fix this off screen. I'm not going to, to do that. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to cut the paper on the inside. And then we're going to be actually working on the other pages. But um, so we have a spine here spine here so on your instructions it should say two spines i was thinking of just of the four pieces and not like i was thinking of this as the other spine i don't know what i was thinking anyway you need two pieces for the spine two pieces cut two and two quarters by eight and a half all right so i will fix that later but we need to cut paper that goes on the inside so i will show you that so you want two pieces of cardstock for that and I don't know if we can use, can't use that piece because it's cut jagged on the end. So you need two pieces of cardstock, eight and three eighths by 12. So cut that eight and three eighths. And I'm using a new cutter, so that doesn't help matters. So that is going to be going like that. And then we have another piece, eight and three eighths. One, two, three, eight. Eight and three eighths. And that's going to go on the other end, okay? And then in between, so you've got that one. Now, you see for me, it looks like it fits perfectly because I am missing a piece. So we're gonna take a smaller piece here, which is gonna be eight and three eighths by four. So you can use that leftover piece from uh, cutting down for your cover. And you want eight and three eighths by four. And that's going to go in between. All right. So we're not going to, we're, we won't see that seam at all. And then what we're going to do is you are going to lay all of that down and glue it down. I'm not going to glue it now, ladies, because as you know, I've made a critical error and I'm missing one part of my, my album. Yeah. Yeah, Dan says. Okay, so. The other thing that we're going to do tonight is we are going to cut all of our cardstock for these pages. Now, this one here, you can see it also has a nice little pocket um, as well that will hold a bunch of recipes. And then it's got this pocket here that holds will hold a bunch of recipes. So we're going to cut all our cardstock for that. I am going to use black cardstock for that. I just want my outside album to be red. Red, red. Um, don't put that down there. I'm going to need that in a second, but I am going to move this out of the way because we're not going to use this again until next week. So you can finish up that cover. I will fix mine so you will see it done properly for next week. Let me move all this garbage out of the way. Now, we need two pieces of cardstock. Cut two. I'm just pulling out my black here. And I'm using the Licorice Twist, the heavy 
cardstock. I did use the artisan um, linen paper for the cover. I did bring this in artisan cardstock from Authentique to see what it's like. The price of this paper is a fairly a fair bit more than the licorice twist. I was concerned about it ripping or splitting on the seams and <coughs> excuse me the card shop seems to hold up pretty nicely and not getting a lot of that cracking the artisan it, it does feel like a linen paper it is nicer it is more expensive if you are interested in it you know give me a thumbs up and we'll get some of it in the store um, I can't think of the price right now I think it's closer to the price of printed paper like about a dollar thirty a piece so, you know, it can get pricey when you're doing a large album like this one that just uses over 25 sheets of cardstock. Um, you know, I know some of you bought the nice big cardstock packs that we sell of American Craft cardstock. That's great to use too. Remember that we've got really heavy chipboard on this album. So, you know, whatever cardstock you use is going to hold up quite nicely with this. So I wouldn't be overly concerned, but I did think that was smart. And there was a number of you that did order those um, American Craft 60 pack cardstocks that we sell. Um, if you're not familiar with them, I believe they're $24.99. You get 60 sheets of cardstock in there. It cuts beautifully in the Cricut machine and the silhouette. Um, if you add up our price of regular cardstocks, 80 cents a sheet. So you're getting 60 sheets i think it works out to like 41 cents a sheet um and there's uh packs of black packs of white and then there's different packs like autumn fall spring summer brights bolds earth tones there's all kinds of them and unlike some of the other scrapbook stores that will not ship them out because they're heavy we ship them out we ship everything out we're not concerned about that and you do know a hundred dollars gets you free shipping okay so we need two pieces of cardstock cut nine inches by eight and one eighth. So let's cut those nine inches. By eight and one eighth. That's one. I'm actually going to move the other out of the way because it's very hard to see. So nine inches. By eight and one eight. Now your scraps are great pieces to use. Instead of taking a full new sheet of cardstock, your scraps are great to use to do as I said about the, um, you know, fussy cutting, uh, applying it, your stickers to the cardstock and then fussy cutting around. So I've got two pieces cut nine by eight and one eight, and I need two pieces cut eight and one eight by eight and one eight. So I'm going to do that. I will show you all my fancy new cutter that I got as well. Um, and I got this because I had so much trouble cutting through chipboard. Well, this baby cuts through some pretty heavy stuff. And I also like to use it for this heavy card shop paper so that it doesn't dull my trimmer um, as quickly. My trimmer blade. This is a rotary blade. It's by Fiskars. And it's pretty heavy duty. It's got a really nice big bed on it. Okay. So here we go. I've got my two pieces. Can I can I show you what the chipboard is supposed to look like on the cardstock? Um, yes, you have to do two pieces, and I'm sorry, ladies, you need to have two pieces, eight and a quarter. Okay, so let me just flip this over. I'm just going to go back on this. So, we have, this piece here is the flap over, all right? So, that piece is the three by eight and a half. But I needed two spines, 
one here and one here and I told you guys only one and the two spines are two and a quarter by eight and a half all right so the order then is we have a flap a spine a back cover a spine a front cover okay so I hope that helps and you want me to show you how to put that together okay then let's go back to that I don't want to confuse you guys and I want to try and keep this simple so let me move all the rest of my stuff out of the way I'm going to get my trusty undo and I'm going to fix this I find my undo it's right here Just let's take that off actually you know what I think I'm just going to cut it right off there put this now under here this is going to take some finagling ladies but let me do that right now instead of wasting all the undo because okay so that is my flap over. You can see it, it's bigger. So I need a piece. I'm also going to need a piece of cardstock. Cut 12 by another piece. Add. But now I've got to add a piece of cardstock onto there. Just bear with me while we do a little fix it. I know you guys want to move on to the next step, so you want to see what I'm doing here. So we will fix this. So 10 and a half by 12. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do is try to attach this together like this. You see what I'm doing? I'm messed up but I can fix it and then we'll we'll cover the inside how's that sound sound like a plan girls piece of tape on there Are your still right? uh, it needs to be on the spine it needs to be two pieces Dan two and a quarter by eight if you want to yeah, we'll, we'll post the new instructions. Okay, so I'm just going to attach that to that to give me some room to work here. Like that. Okay, so I need another piece of chipboard. You know, I threw all that. Oops, hold on. There's a piece. And this needs to be two and a quarter by eight and a half. So I don't know if you could see how thick this chipboard is, but this is what I'm cutting through my trusty little cutter here, two and a quarter. But I have to pull the blade towards me because this is so... Somebody earlier was asking how you were cutting your chipboard. Okay, I will show you how I'm cutting my chipboard. You can use an X-Acto knife, depending on how thick your chipboard is. The chipboard that I'm cutting right now is super, super thick. It is not easy to cut. In fact, I think I'm going to switch to something a little thinner. This is supposed to be a medium weight and believe me, it's, it's not. It is so thick. Um, Sorry, I just want to cut this fine. I don't want to measure incorrectly. Um, so I will show you this one. It is a rotary trimmer by Fiskers. And it's quite big. So this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. And then it's got a huge rotary blade here. Is it showing, Dan? Because I can't see it. Sorry? Oh, there it is. Okay. 
We've got a little bit of a delay on the video again. So it's quite big. I can't even show the whole thing to you. Show the laser part. So this doesn't have the laser. Oh, what happened to the laser one? The laser one's at the store. This one here is just, it's a rotary blade. It's super heavy duty. You can see the um, assembly of this, like the heavy duty metal. Um, and then that folds under so you can take it away. It, it probably weighs a good five pounds. Okay, here we go. We're going to stick this one down. And we'll get this finished up in two seconds, ladies. I will right, we'll go quick on this. So again, you've got your cover, you've got a spine, you've got your back, you've got a spine, and then you have your flap over. So we'll do all that. And we'll glue this down. So my spacing there, like that. There we go. And now we're going to put this baby down. So I'm just leaving this paper on it. Actually, maybe I can tear some of it off. Make it a little flatter. I could use another piece of chipboard, but I'm not. I'm just going to add this one in here. Put some tape on there. No one will be the wiser. Sarah, what did you do? Oh, no. Sarah, what did you do wrong? You think you've done something wrong? So I'm, I've gone back to do it, putting the cover together. So we've got your front cover, a spine, a back cover, a spine, and then the flap over is what I'm adding right now. And it's hard to show you the whole thing. I can't show you the whole thing. It just doesn't fit in the camera with this being so big. Oh, Sarah, seven inches of paper left over. That's not a problem. That's what I had said earlier, is that you'll have a lot left over. You're just going to trim that excess off. As long as you've got one, two, three, four, five strips of chipboard, you're okay. And you just need enough to be able to fold it over on the edges. I'll show you as soon as I'm finished with this one. So you will end up with a bunch left over. Um... Just give me a second here. So you just, you, you need to have a quarter inch gap in between. And then look at this end. This is how much I have left over and I had cut this piece down. So don't be alarmed by that. So this is, this is a learning moment. It, uh, it kind of shows you how easy it is to fix something. Yeah, like Dan said, you know, this is, this is a teaching moment because or a learning moment because it shows you that if you make a mistake, you know, everything is fixable. And no one knows but us. Except all the people watching the videos. And all the people watch watching the videos. Are you guys familiar with the fingertip knife? I like to show you the tools that I use. Um, I know a lot of people ask about them. This fingertip knife is a great little tool. So you hold it like you would hold a pencil. So you slide your finger in. My blade is dull right now. I have a pack of new ones here. But the nice thing with this is that I can work close to the page and hold it close to the blade in order to, to work the, the little knife. Um, they are great. I probably have 10 of them kicking around because I lose one. And then ten, oh, Dan says 10, um, maybe a little bit more. Um, so I lose one and then I'll find it and then, you know, it's like my pens. I probably, yeah, they're, underneath all the they're underneath all the highlighters. That's right. Glad you got that correct. Okay. So I'm just going to fix this end up. So again, I'm going to give it a nice little crease on both ends. 
You guys are probably ahead of me at this point because you didn't mess up like I did. Crease along there. Okay, I'm gonna put some tape on there. Yeah, the, the knife is great, Jennifer. It, it just, you know, it, it just brings your hand closer to your product that you're working on. And when we're working with a lot of smaller stuff, it's nice to have an X-Acto that's, that's tiny enough that we're not going to cut our fingers off. And Well, some of us won't cut our fingers off, but... Okay, here we go. So this is going to be all all fixed up I'm taking my paper off of that end remember i put a bead of glue whoops put a bead of glue along there baby weights are a necessity when your tip gets a little bit gummed up and starts coming out a little fast okay so i'm going to push that up and glue that down. A teachable moment. I'm sorry? Oh yes, we actually have a class going on in Guelph tonight. We had a, a sold out class Saturday in Mount Forest. We have a sold out class tonight in Guelph. Um, and then we have um, a couple more. Oh yeah, we had a sold out mixed media class. We had, um, and we're doing uh, social distancing in the classroom. It's working out really well. Everybody is comfortable. Um, so we, we have a sampler class coming up, which is really kind of cool because you get to, oops, I should glue this side down first. You get to um, create a piece that you can put in a frame and we're gonna be doing it every month. And so this particular one has got some embossing on it. It's got a shaker uh, section on it, um, lots of really nice papers. And then next month we're doing it with doodle bug paper. So um, we'll be doing that class every month. I also have a Bow Bunny calendar class scheduled. I only have one spot left for that one. We had a limited amount. I am working on another calendar with a Graphic 45 older paper that I happen to have kicking around. And so um, we'll be doing that. I have paper kicking around. Yes. Hush. He likes to steal my stuff to put in the store. And then I look for it, and it's like, uh, excuse me, that belongs to me. But it's in new packaging. It can be sold. You can be sold. Okay, so there we go. Fixed. It is a little thicker there because of the double paper. But now that's the right way. See? There we go. All fixed up. Okay, so I'm going to show you then how to how to do the inside. Just want to get that a really good crease on the outside. That's better, Lucy. That's better, Lucy. Lucy's mind was in the wrong place. Um. I am working also, I'm finishing up the uh, Under the Tuscan Sun album for a class as well. I'm hoping to do a Graphic 45 Christmas time album. And I'm also working on a Simple Stories binder that is available in the store that's great for a December daily. So lots and lots of stuff, you just gotta stay tuned because. We're hopping along here. I, I have a chain and ball to my, my desk and I sit here and get my work done. Yes, Sheila, more Graphic 45. There are a couple of new lines launching. There's Blossom, which is gorgeous. 
And then they just did a re-release on a, on a couple of lines as a collector's edition. I know you love all of the Graphic 45, so stay tuned for that. But I want to do the Christmas time album. Um, it really is quite nice. Okay, so now we have the outside done. Let's cover this inside and then we can put this to bed. How's that? So we want two sheets, eight and three eighths by 12. I think I cut them. Eight and three eighths by 12. Did I? Eight and three eighths by 12. And one piece, eight and three three eighths by four. This is not eight and three eighths. That's eight and three eighths. And then one more piece. Eight and three eighths. Eight, two, three. Okay. So we are going to now cover the inside here. And then we're going to overlap that smaller piece. You want us to dress up as Lucy and Ricky. Well, I'm going to buy an old vintage dress to wear and I'm going to put some bows in my hair, but I'm afraid Ricky has become bald. So Ricky doesn't have any hair to worry about. But we can get him... Uh, some drums to play. No, we're not going to do that either. And we don't want them singing either. So we'll just have to pretend. Okay, so I've run some score tape along there. I'm going to run my art glitter glue and I'm going to stick this down. I'm starting at the front cover and I'm working my way across. Okay, so let me take the paper off. This is cut a bit smaller, so it's just going to fit right on top where we want it. And your fingertip knife is also good for catching the edge of your score tape. There we go. So this did delay us a bit. We're an hour in. I think what we'll do is we will run to an hour and a half and then I will um, give you some homework to do. But you will have the general idea. We're going to make one of each section. And then you can cut the rest when we're done. Okay, so you want to come up just like that. And stick that paper down. That's my little doohickey. Use your scraper. Get that paper put down nicely. Find where your crease is and really secure that in there well. I don't know if you noticed when I was using my scraper, it was putting marks on there. I switched over to my Teflon bone folder. These also come in a bigger size. Um, and it's not scratching my my paper. I'm not overly concerned because this is all going to be covered anyway, but it just goes to show you that it does make a difference. Now we're going to take this little piece, we're going to butt it up against there, and we're going to put the, this little piece in first. Oops, put some score tape down. Stick that down. Okay. So I am sitting in my craft room. The cupboards have started to go up. I'm going to have lots of cupboard space. I'm going to have a nice table here. I cannot wait. It's just that we have a lot of guests booked. And so it's a little hard to get that kind of stuff done in between having guests here at the retreat. 
and running two stores, yes. We just had guests here uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They left on Sunday. The next guests arrived Monday, Tuesday. They left today on Wednesday. The next group arrives tomorrow and they're here Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you can see, doesn't give me a whole lot of time. So you see how I'm able to lift this up and move it because it's not the way I want it to be. Still not right. Overlap it a little bit more. There we go. There. And that's because I'm using the score tape with the glue. Okay. And then that last piece is going to go in there. You can use the whole the whole thing. Just we didn't want this seam to be right where the crease was. Okay, so let's put that last section in. Oh my goodness, I'm stuck everywhere. Being attacked. I need to put all my score tape on my stacker out of the way. Quite the adventure. My tip just came right off. My tip needs to have a little bit of warm water run through it and cleaned up. And you know what happens when you're trying to go in a hurry? It doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to line it up from my right side. Line it up that way. And that looks good. And now we're going to stick that down. Um, I tend to leave about a half an inch overlap, maybe even a little bit more. You've got enough paper to play with, but about a half an inch to a half an inch is fine. Um, again, we're not going to see any of that. We just want to make sure that, you know, that they are butted together or overlapping rather so that they're not butted together and then you don't see a, a gap at the top. Okay, so you see how I've used my Teflon bone folder to get in between there. And that is complete. Okay. So when I used the magnets, I used, I think, I ended up using five. You can get away with using three um, if you want, but we don't have to worry about that until we put our paper down. But what is happening right now is if I put this flat, you can see that this fold like comes away from the magnets easily. That's because this spine is quite big. When the recipes are in here, this is going to be up higher and then it, it will hold and stick in place um, just by, you know, the depth of the amount of recipes in there. As I said, you, you can put in a, probably close to 100 recipes in here. So I did want to be sure that I had enough magnets anyway to hold. I found that flap was quite big just to put three. So I put three and then I put two more. Um, so a total of five on there. All right. Just so you know what's going on there. So we have our cover covered with our paper inside and outside. Okay. 
So we are not going to do any of our printed paper on here. We're going to do all of our cardstock cutting, or I'm going to at least show you one section of each, and then you can do all the cutting by yourselves. And I will show you if you want to start to cut your paper, you can do that as well. And what I may get Dan to do is to post some photos of the inside of this album so you can see how I laid my paper. But I go back to the fact that you are using all the paper in one particular line. So it doesn't really matter what goes where because it's all going to look really nice. Okay, I've got 20 million cutting mats here. So now, does that help? Sheila, I think you were asking me to finish that inside. So I hope that helps. I hope that explained. Oh, look, there's the other piece I had cut. Imagine that. So now you're going to need your scoring board. And you want two pieces cut, as I said, nine and by eight and one eighth, and two pieces, eight and one eighth by eight and one eighth. All right. The bigger piece, you are going to. Is it going to be big enough for me? I need my big. I have two different scoreboards. I have the large one that is like 12 by 12 if I'm doing large projects. But I do like my little one for when I'm making cards or if I have smaller pieces. It's just easier to have it on my table than to keep moving the bigger one out of the way. So your nine inch side of your nine by eight and one eighth. That's the eight and one eighth. Eight and one eighth. These are the nine inch. So with the nine inch side across, we want to score a half inch on both ends of this one. So we want to score a half inch and a half inch and a half inch and a half an inch okay fold that in so this is creating the two bases um that are going to get slid onto a hinged section. This is what the hinged section looks like. And I, I have one pre-made because I have more trouble figuring that thing out than anything else. I don't know why. And with everything that has happened so far tonight, I'd have even more problems if I didn't have that ready. Okay. Fold those edges over. There we go. Now, this piece is going to get secured onto that piece. All right? So we're going to do that twice. And I should have used a quarter inch. It's too wide. That's better. tape out of the way, add a little glue, and this is the same size all the way around so it doesn't matter which way you put it down. I do like it to face me when I do this, it's easier to, to see it, there we go. And down toes. And okay, so what happens with these is that it is getting it will be stuck on. You can see I'm off a bit. I'm just going to trim that down. But it's going to go on the hinges. Oops. Sure, like this. So that's going to be 
our, our pages. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so we're doing two like that. I'll, I'll trim that excess off there after. But let's get the second one done. There. And there. Again, there's a little bit of an overlap, so I'm going to trim that off. Actually, I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it down a bit. You can use your paper trimmer or your scissors. Just want to trim that excess off there to make it a little neater. like I went an eighth of an inch too long. You all know how much I like my one eighths and this new trimmer, the one eighths aren't marked as clearly as they usually are on my other trimmer. Okay, so those are the two pocket sections. I will show you that in here. That is these two sections. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building up these flaps now. So we are going to cut out all of these pieces here. Okay, and there's two sections of them. So there's a lot of cutting. I'm going to show you one cut and then you are going to do the other. We're also going to cut this piece. All right, so we'll do that cut right now. So the one piece that we want to cut in half you know what, I think I will use my other trimmer for this because I can measure. So we want this piece to be cut 9 by 8 and 1 8. 9 inches. By 8 and an eighth. Here we go. We are then going to take this piece and cut it in half. Okay, so I line it up so my tips, I don't know if you can see this or not. Slide this down for a second. So I have it on an angle in my trimmer and I'm cutting it into two triangles. like that. These are going to be going on the ends like this. And it's hard to see black on black, I know, so I'm going to hold it up. So what we want to do, first of all, first off, is we need to score a half inch on two sides, the two short, shorter sides. So take your scoreboard. up. I'm putting it like this and I'm scoring a half an inch and then I'm going to flip it up this way and score it a half an inch. Okay, so I've got it scored to half inch. Same thing here on the short side, half an inch, flip it over, and a half an inch. Take that little square out so that these flaps will fold over nice and flat. Oh, 
like that. Okay, so that is going to be on this page like this. Now we have these little tails hanging off here. Just snip them off. Now you have a, a couple of options to finish off this edging. You can use a um, punch and punch a pattern along here, or you can put a piece of lace if you don't have a decorative punch. I have a couple of different ones that I use. Let me trim that little thing off so it doesn't create a lot of bulk there. I'm not going to glue those down onto those two black pieces yet because I didn't put paper in the background. I left this black and then I put this on top, but I kind of like the idea, I think, of putting paper there. Let me show you what I mean. And you, you decide what you like. So. Actually, I did. I did. I put paper there. So we want to put the paper down first, and then we're going to put this. But you can also put paper on this piece. I didn't. I left it the black on both of them, and then I just added stickers on there. But you can put a piece of pa a printed paper on there first before you cut a pattern or leave it solid. We are going to cover that. But again, the printed paper we're going to leave till next week, so we're not going to glue these down onto the page. We're just going to get all the creases done and then we're going to put them aside. Okay, trim that one off. And trim that one off. There we go. Okay, so we have our two pockets like this. And we have our, our two um, sections like this. Now, I have a bunch of different punches. This, These happen to be Martha Stewart. I don't know if you guys know how to use these or not, but you, you start punching, and then you can... You just keep following along. Now, you see, this is where the problem is, though, with using the thicker paper, is that the punches jam. And it doesn't want to come out. Kind of have to use the heavier punch, yeah, so it messed up the edge of mine. Okay, I'm going to show you on this one again. And it wants to keep sticking on me. This is the only issue with this card stock. And it's jammed. Okay. We'll leave that. Anyway, if you have a punch and if you're successful with getting it to run through, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, just leave it. You can add a ribbon along there. I will fix these. So next week when we're gluing them down, they'll be ready to go. I'm going to get Dan to take my paper out of my punch. This is why I like my new, these are the chompers from We Are Memory Keepers, the new ones that we got in. There are four different ones and they all do different things. Um, the nice thing with these is that it does, they go through this paper, no problem. I'll show you here the different ones. There are four different ones. They are heavy duty. So this one here does, there's two, corner like these flip closed and they flip open and then you flip this open to empty out all your pieces after um, but you just slide it in so this is the cloud you slide it in and it chomps it does the cloud edge or it does the scallop edge um, this one here does three eighths and one eighth corners we used these with uh, other albums that I've used this heavy cardstock and it just goes through no problem. This particular one I really like. This is Photo 
There's a photo and it does the angle. But the last one is the ticket. This does a ticket, like a ticket stub, and it does the decal. So you can actually do little, I had a little ticket cut out here that I did. Um, so you don't have an issue with the darn thing jamming like it just did on me. These ones are heavy duty, although it does not do a whole border along. Um, it does do corners for you quite nicely. Okay, so we've got those two angled pieces done. We've got your two background pieces done. So what we need to do is we need to cut the waterfall pieces that get attached now. All right, so this is where you cut. You're cutting 16 pieces, ladies. So I'm just going to show you a couple. Out of the way again. Table is just never big enough. So we need 16 pieces cut, six and a half by four. This is why we use so much cardstock because you've got that six and a half. You're only getting three three pieces off of one one sheet. Okay. So we are cutting 16 pieces like this. All right, I'm going to leave that for you to do. And what you're doing is, after you've got all of those pieces cut, on the six and a half side, you want to score at the half inch. Right there. Okay. Is what we're creating. Move that again. So we are creating 16 pages like this. Okay? So you want to cut 16 of them to have them ready and score them at the half inch. All right? 16 like that. You are also then take your leftover pieces and you need to cut. 16 pieces that are seven inches by one and a half. So seven inches. By one and a half. And you need 16 pieces like this. This one here uh, sorry let me just think for a second here. This one is seven inches long. You are scoring at two ends on this one ladies because it's creating, I will show you, you have this piece that's going to flip over, but this is the piece, a half inch on each end. Oops. This is what's creating this little pocket on the front for us. Okay? So what you can do is you can cut all 16 like this, Score them at the half. All right, I'm not going to cut 16 here on the camera with you. And 16 like this, scored a half inch on each end. All right, so these are six and a half by four, because then we've got a four by six flat piece here. And then these are one and a half by seven. Seven because we're taking an inch off by creating a half inch score line on each. Okay, 16 and 16 of those. What you can do is then stick this piece on top of this piece by putting a little bit of score tape. I will do one so you can see what I'm talking about. Put score tape along the bottom edge because it is making a pocket. Don't use half inch score tape on this because your pocket then won't be very deep. 
So use the half inch, or sorry, quarter inch. Take the tape off. Okay, and then you're sticking that down on the bottom. We are going to be cutting our paper into two pieces for this, our printed papers. Okay, so that's that little pocket there. We have a little pocket that'll hold a recipe card and then our fold. 16 like that, okay? So that will do these two sections. Now, the top two I did not put pockets on, so you can leave two without pockets. If you put a pocket, it's no big deal. I just wanted to leave it as full cards like this, and then I only put the pockets on this side, no pocket on this side. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, you can put one there and there. If you cut 16, then you're going to be putting them on both sides. If you prefer to just do eight, just on one side, you can do that. This is an option for you. Or you can put, I just did on one side. In the measurements, I did tell you the two to cut 16 to do both sides, but I was also still worried about bulk in there. Um, but with making the spine bigger, it's neither here nor there. So you can put a pocket on there or leave it like this and just have a pocket on this side. If you're just putting a pocket on this side, you're cutting eight of these. If you're putting a pocket on both, you need 16 of those little pieces, okay? So that covers these two areas here. If you wanted to start cutting your printed paper, you can do that. And what I did here is I cut, this is four by six, this size. So I cut it three and seven eighths by um, five and seven eighths. And then I took one inch off the bottom of each of those to put in the bottom here. And I just wanted a little border around if you want to leave that we can cut all that later and then I will show you how we we put it into the spine okay these two sides are both the same so I'm going to show you again how to cut those and you can do all of that cutting off screen so you need two base pieces that they're all going to go on and those base pieces are eight by six and a quarter so the base piece is right here this is all built up on a base piece and then there's a pocket in here if you can see there's a pocket here as well so you want two pieces cut eight by six and a quarter Eight inches by six. I can't see my quarter marks in there. Six and a quarter. That's the base that it's going to be built up on. Eight by six and a quarter. Eight and six and a quarter. There we go. So I have my two bases, the eight and six and six and a quarter. Move all this other paper out of the way. And now we're creating those waterfalls. So these pieces are going to be folded over. We're going to score those later, but we are going to cut 16 pieces. And these are on the measurements that we've given you. 16 pieces, four and three quarters 
by six and a quarter. So four and three quarters. Four and three quarters by six and a quarter. Okay, so your four and a quarter by six and a quarter, you're going to score it at the six and a quarter, you're going to score it at the half inch. Just like that. Uh, scored the wrong side. I sure did. Scoring it on the four and three quarter side because it's a it's a waterfall. Okay. So this is going to end up being secured to this. And it's going to flip up. So you need to do 16 of these. Four and three quarters by six and a quarter. I'm just going to do one more so you can see how you lay them. Is that big enough? It's not big enough. Six and a quarter. Four and three quarters. Six and a quarter by four and three quarters. Okay. So on that four and three quarter side coming down. Score it at the half. Okay? You can get these ready by putting score tape all along these pieces. And what happens is, I'm going to hold this away from me. So your first piece gets lined up at the top and open. Then this one. gets butted up, sorry, it's hard to see black on black. So that's your base I want to show you here. This one gets butted up against there, like that, so that you have a gap here, which creates your waterfall, okay? So you can stick them onto your bases or just put your um, score tape on the flaps here, and we'll put them together next week. But the first one gets lined up, if you are doing it, open that up. Next one gets lined up there. Open that up. Next one gets lined up. So you're doing eight like that. All right, so you've got lots of cutting to do. You're doing 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then that bottom one is your, that's your eight. On, the, on these ones here, I used the cardstock to create the pockets. I didn't want that much bulk here, so I just did paper. And I did the paper, for this one, I did the paper on both sides. You can see here. Oh, not on all of them, just a couple. But I just did it with paper. Um, if you want to do it the same as this with, um, with the heavier cardstock pocket, but it's not necessary. It's You're gonna put a single recipe in there. It's not gonna be holding a lot a lot of a lot of stuff all right so you've got lots of cutting to do get all of that cut and then next week i will show you how to cut the papers we're going to insert these in and then i will show you how to how to decorate and uh, so we'll, we'll do the outside cover we will do one section with the printed paper the other section you can do on your own and then one section of this and one section you can do on your own. It's not a not a difficult album. Um, the decorating is the is the fun part. All right, so do your homework. If you have any questions, you're stuck by anything that I've said, play back the video or send me an email and I will answer them as best I can. 
Otherwise, I will see all of you Saturday at five o'clock. Don't miss out on this live uh, presentation. I would love to wow her with how many people we get um, watching the live uh, video. And then I will see you next Wednesday to finish off this album as well. I hope you had a great time.